Hey guys, so I've been doing some live coding lately and you guys seem to be enjoying it and also I've been leaving some debugging in some of my videos and I thought I'm going to try something new today and see how you guys like this. I'm just going to show you how I go about learning something or trying something out and all the debugging and errors that will come about with setting it up. So I've been doing a lot of GraphQL stuff. And I've been doing it pretty much all in JavaScript, but I also really enjoy Python. And I know you can build a GraphQL server, I assume. Uh, GraphQL, I know, has a library. Graphene is what it's called for Python. So I want to check it out, see if I can get a server up and running, and how I go about doing it. I've never looked at Graphene before. It's my first time. I got the just the readme up right here and I have the quick start right here and I'm just going to see how how long how far it takes uh, to get this set up on my computer and just try it out so uh, yeah so without further ado I'm just going to go ahead and get started um, and try adding this in so I'm just going to go through the quick start which is right here and see if I can get this guy set up so the first thing it recommends is installing uh, graphene with pip now I already have pip on my computer and I have Python 3. Point, I think 3.6. Um, you can find out on the CD Maker Graph in Quick Start. All right. So I'm gonna do Python slash. I was gonna say slash v, but I also did a different command with it, and that did. Okay, I guess dash v is not how you do it. I do know if you just type Python. It'll go ahead and tell us. I got 2.7 here. I much prefer Python 3, which I think I have found there. Okay. So I have Python 3, 3.6. And now I'm going to do pip 3 install graphene. Um, and then it looks like this is how they build schemas. We're going to create a simple schema with one field hello. Alright, so the class is query, so this looks like instead of an object, you make classes. Um, hello, and then you resolve hello. Alright, and then querying, we just do schema.execute. Alright, this looks simple enough, so let's try this out. So, in this folder, I'm going to go ahead and open Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to create a new file called main.py. And when I usually start coding Python, what I like to do is just say create a main function and then I like to say if name is equal to main and the reason for this is if you import this package or this main file it won't go ahead and run this code if I were to just like put code in here instead doing it like this um, we'll only call this main function if we actually execute this file instead of importing it so okay so we got that and I'm going to come over here, copy this, and create our schema here. So in main, I'm going to go ahead and port this at the top. And I can go ahead and create my class here. And then schema. Yep, this is fine. We'll put the schema in main. All right, we can go ahead and save this. It reformats. Um, kind of interesting, missing doctrine, unable to import. This is, I have PyLint on, so we're going to see lots of little warnings like this and whatnot. I actually don't like PyLint that much. I find it's, they bark a lot. And I don't tend to write a lot of comments, and a lot of them are, talk about comments. I actually don't know how to, like, turn settings off in uh, PyLint. I should probably learn how to do that. But anyway, let's get this running. So it looks like... Um, graphene.string, the name of the argument. Looks like we're giving it a type again. Oh, no we're not. We're saying the name is a, of type string and then the default value is stranger. So I guess I'm assuming I could add more here and do like uh, name and like age. I could do like graphene.integer but we'll try this in a second, before we start experimenting, let's just get the basic setup running and making sure that works. And look at that, they're using Python 2 right here, shameful. Um, we can go 
ahead and fix that syntax for them. And now hopefully when we print this, I don't know, what will we see? Hello plus whatever args we give it. We're executing hello, not giving it arguments. The default is stranger, so it should say hello stranger to us. So Python 3 is main, and it prints hello stranger to us, cool. So we got our first GraphQL query uh, running right here. That's pretty, pretty neat. Um, what I'd like to do is set up like maybe like a Flask server. If you haven't heard of Flask, um, it's kind of like Express for Python. Um, there's also Django, but I don't think we need Django. I think Flask will be sufficient. We don't need something big. But what I want to do is experiment real quick with this. So I'm going to try adding an age, say graphene.argument. And I'm assuming it's graphene.int. I don't know if it's integer or int. I'm guessing it's integer. Um, we'll see if we get it wrong. Default value. We don't have to set a default value for all of them, right? So what I can do here is args. And what I can do is say hello. And then I'm going to put their name here. So I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to do format. Format. This is a Python 3 syntax to like add strings into your, this is like a string template. So I'm going to say hello. Um, you are years old. And then format, I can say args name and args age. And now for hello, what I'm going to do is we get default args for um, the name, but we don't for the age. We need to specify an age here. So I'm going to say age of 13. And so I'm going to rerun this query, and hopefully we see hello, stranger, you are 13 years old. If I run that, graphene has no attribute int integer. Let's try int. If this doesn't work, we can go to the documentation and see for sure. There we go. Hello stranger, you are 13 years old. Now we could also add the name property here. So what's up? Oh, we gotta escape that. Well, actually I should put actually put my name, Bob. Um, there we go. By the way, my name's not Bob and I'm not 13. Um, and bam. Let's see what else we can do with this. Let's go to the next page, I'm ready. So enum, scalar, scalars, lists, what are those lists about? Oh, it's just talking about actual data type lists. Okay, object type, schema, mutations. Um, so mutations look like they work similarly. Static method, mutate, class input. This looks like, I'm, I'm curious why they put static method here. Um, they didn't do it here. So I don't know why mutations are considered static methods. Doesn't look like it says here either. Um, looking at this, it's creating a person object. Person. So graph. Bean. I, I, there must be more code than what they're showing here. Because graphene.field lambda person doesn't make any sense. Let's see, person OK or the output field is a mutation when it's resolved. Okay, input attributes or arguments. Oh, here we go. Here's our person. All right, so they have a person, which is an object type, string int. So this is a mutation that takes what? These two parameters. No, I guess the input is what it takes. So it takes a name, and then it outputs a person, it looks like. And okay. This is interesting syntax. All right, this makes sense to me. Now what I want to see is if we can get this guy on a server like Flask. Um, executing a query, middleware, resolve arguments, example, using with graphene. Um, sure, let's see what middleware looks like. I'm just off middleware. All right, so before I just Google how this works, I'm just gonna like try getting Flask to work with this. So 
I'm going to import Flask. Now, I for sure do not have the syntax memorized for Flask. So we're going to go to just the home page of Flask. And this is all I really want. All right, we are going to, our hello route here, we'll put graphene at the top as well. So this query is what I'd like to execute. So we'll put our query right here. Um, we don't need a main. Now that we're a Flask server, I'm not going to worry about doing main. We'll set up the schema here. We need to set up the schema down here. And then schema is a global, which we can access in a routes now. Um, okay, I'm done with you guys. Okay. So now what I'd like to take is an argument, which is just the query. And then we're going to go ahead and return schema. And I don't even remember how we did a query, so I should put that back. Okay, execute. So we can get rid of this. So, and I just want to return schema.execute. And then we're executing this on whatever query we get. So we're going to have to pass in like a route parameter. Um, so this should be a host request. So let's go ahead and go to docs and get us how we do a post request. What is Flasker? I've never heard of Flasker. Introducing Flasker, a children's blogging application. Oh, okay, so this is where they go to the application. Let's see. Okay, let's go to documentation overview. We don't need to see, I just want to go to creating the database, the view functions. So do they have any post requests? They do. And it doesn't look like they're getting anything from the body, which is what we'd like to do, but that's okay. So really the only, this is actually not even that helpful. The only thing we can take from it is that we are gonna do methods and then post. And then I want to get the body of the request. I do know that I think there is like a request thing here. Let's go back to docs that you can access things from. So forward, quick start, a minimum application, what does the server do? Accessing request data. That's what we want. That's what we care about. Um we want methods, so it looks like we can import request here. So it's actually not a parameter like I thought it was. That's how most do it, but I guess Flask is doing it like this. And then we want to get request.form. Well, yeah, form will work. I more wanted like request.body or something. Let's see if they have a body. Nope, we don't get anything. Um, we also need to like turn our thing into JSON. After, after we do that, the dump, or after we do the execute, we should do JSON.dumps. It dumped this guy. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick print of what request.body is. That might not even exist. So before that, I think what was it? Form. We could pass in form. Search for form. Is that the top? Oh, this is a min application. Okay, we lost our place. So here it is. Requesting. So request dot form. Let's go ahead and print both of these. Um, this is our post request. This looks good. So I'm going to try doing that now. Unable to import. It's fine. So go ahead and run my application. Start off, start this up. I need to run this with Python 3. And the server didn't even start. Let's go to a min. They had, at the top, they said what the min. Python, oh, do I have to say flask run? 
I mean, I haven't done flask in actually forever, guys. I sh it should just... I need to tell what port and stuff, actually. Flask, run. Let's try it. Oh, but you have to tell it what the thing is. So, export flask app. Mine is called main.py. And now I can do flask run. And alright, so coming here, we should get nothing. Cool. Um, but if I do postman, you can do some post requests. So let's full screen this guy. And when this guy's done loading, what we'll try doing is making a post to here and then seeing what the uh, console log is for that. Well, I mean, it's print in uh, this. So we're going to go to, yep. And we don't need any of this junk. Um, I'm going to say query, and then our query is going to be hello, passing in an age of 99. So we'll go ahead and run that. Good internal error is what we expected. And immutable dictionary here. It looks like there's nothing called body, right? It has no... So, cool little trick in Python, guys, if you don't know. I should just Google this, but let's see if we can figure it out from here. If you don't know um, what all the, well, we'll just return high. If you don't know what all the um, possible, like, things that you can call on an object, you can do dir on it, and it'll tell you. So, then I can get all the properties of it and, like, things I can call and look at. So... I wonder if Flask auto restarts, um, if there's a way to get it to do that, because that would be really nice. Because that's usually how JavaScript applications work. Alright, hi here, let's see what it shows here. And that is a bunch. Let's see what, if we can just quickly, I think data is what we want. Print request.data. And we'll just save that, rerun it. And run that, get hello, and bam, we found what we wanted, guys, nice. Um, so I'm just going to do, um, data is going to be json.loads, and then we're just going to execute data.query. And Python, you can't do it like that. You need to do it like this. Cool. And now let's see what happens. So go ahead and run our query. Oops. Nothing. And that's because I didn't restart it. Uh, other thing, I should... Let's make this a real GraphQL endpoint, guys. Slash GraphQL. So slash GraphQL. And go ahead and run that. And that's because I... I really need to look up after this. After I'm done with this, I'll look up how to actually run this thing and have it restart automatically because that would be super nice. All right, internal error. We were so close. I thought we had it done. Um, execution. The type execution result is not JSON serializable. Oh. I guess, okay, so when we execute this, we then have to turn it into JSON. So let's go back. Relay testing in graph. No, it's going to be in getting started. It was what we had here. So we need to call result.data. Dot data, I believe. And then I think it's going to give us a dictionary back. And of course, come back, restart the server and run it. Um, and then we get a response. JSON, hello. With hello stranger, you're 99 years old. Nice, guys. I think that we got it to work. So let's type 12. We get 12 years old. And if I change my query to name um, John, and 
course, we're going to have to escape this because it's JSON. We get, hello, John, you're 12 years old. Um, not bad. I think uh, we're going to wrap. I'm going to wrap up the video here. This is what I wanted to accomplish in this video. Get a little server up that runs GraphQL. This is definitely not how you should be running GraphQL in Flask, by the way. Um, uh, just right off the bat, like you should not be taking it like this. There's a definitely going to be a better way, I know. Because one, how do you know whether it's going to be... I guess we're just executing it here. But like we're not handling mutations, queries, all the different things, errors. Um, a library should do that for you. Um, so we need something like Apollo server, right? That um, for Python. So I'm going to look into that, see what's available. And maybe I'll do another video on this um, using doing it you know with an actual uh, the actual setup you want but this is pretty interesting how you can get GraphQL like this is not a bad setup if you just want a super simple GraphQL setup right if you just want something super simple this will run really nicely and it's super simple that's nice so uh, yeah that's it for this video guys let me know if you like this style um, I might do more of them or I'm just kind of like trying something out um, I'll go ahead and, um, this, I mean, this code is so short, I'm not even going to put it on GitHub. You guys can just, like, put it here. If you guys really want, um, I can put it on GitHub. Leave me a comment. I'm just going to leave it down for now because it's just so small. Um, but, yeah, that's it for this. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.